okay, to the membranes, how things move through the membranes. And you can see on this photograph, you can see there's the phosphate head and then there's the lipid tails. And you can see how it forms the layer with the, the membrane with two layers by, by layer. And the lipids point toward the lipids and the phosphates point out toward the water that is in the environment. And it's also within the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, how do you get through this membrane? There's different ways to do it. Uh, nature says things move via diffusion. And diffusion is just movement of a substance, anything from high concentration to low concentration. There is a force in the universe which causes this. And this is this entropy, which is a uh, movement from an ordered high energy state to a disordered low energy state. And that's what drives diffusion. Osmosis is specifically the diffusion of water through a membrane, or some would say across a semi-permeable layer or semi-permeable membrane. Active transport is utilizing cell energy, ATP, and bulk transport is when large quantities are wrapped up in the membrane and moved across or scooted across and such. Uh, facilitated diffusion, that's where a, a special channel or gate only allows uh, certain ions or substances to diffuse and prevents everything else. So that's a facilitated diffusion. So there's that's the the typical drawing of diffusion. Here you have the uh, ink or dye being placed into the water. So that's a high concentration. So that's high energy. And it wants to spread out to a low energy. This is an ordered state. This is disorder. And these molecules are in a constant random motion. And uh, temperature affects this because temperature is basically kinetic energy. And if you put more kinetic energy in, things move faster, they disperse faster. Uh, heat helps things dissolve better and move and all. So. so it's the net movement because, go back, these suckers are constantly moving. And theoretically, if you waited around long enough, they could go back to that state. Theoretically, it might take you a few billion years, but it could happen. Uh, but the molecules have this energy. And that makes them move in all kinds of crazy directions and such. And they move out until they reach this equilibrium. And equilibrium is this lowest energy state. And they're constantly moving. They don't get to that and stop. They constantly move, but there's just really no net movement after that. I think that's a little... Uh, if you were watching the video, the PowerPoint, you would see that these, the, the concentrated molecules, will dance around in between all the other ones and all so you can see that this is a, an evacuated tube and that's the liquid bromine bromine is one of the few elements that is a liquid at a room temperature and here you can see it's uh, a lot of it in, in a high concentration right here now this is a, a vacuum so there's no air molecules from around pushing it or blowing it or mixing it or stirring it it's just the energy of the molecules themselves that are moving and then over time, they diffuse out into that space. That's what that drawing is meant to show. Diffusion through a membrane, that's water. So here is our cell, our cell membrane. And the cell membrane itself is polar or, or nonpolar because it's a phospholipid. And so water and oils, lipids don't mix. But water is a special case. It's small. And because it is so small, the individual molecules kind of slip through. They, they sneak through and such. Larger charged particles or larger polar molecules can't. Some things can because they are nonpolar. They slip right through. Other things can't because they're polar. So the cell membrane is selective. It's selectively permeable. So here we look. These are, I believe... Uh, you have these different size molecules right here, and there's the membrane. This is inside. This is outside. You let it go over time, and poof, the smaller molecules cross. The larger ones don't, or the uh, the nonpolar cross, and the polar ones don't. But what you see here is a selection. It's selectively permeable. 
And if these little red dots were water, you would see that this is diffusion of water across a membrane, and then that would be osmosis. But notice the red ones, they move until they reach an equilibrium. The blue ones right here, they are prevented. They are prevented from crossing as such. So they are in a high energy or an ordered, a higher ordered state on the inside of the cell. So here's another way of this diffusion of molecules and such. So here they are in a high ordered inside and here they are in a high ordered outside. Uh, if we let it go, boop, they reach equilibrium both inside and outside of the cell. That's just what's going to happen. And these are small hydrophobic, that's uh, the, uh, the lipids and such, they diffuse in and out, nothing stopping them. Uh, what affects diffusion? How big is the, con how concentrated is something? More concentrated, uh, steeper the gradient, they would say. Uh, temperature, we already mentioned that one since that's kinetic energy, it's the energy of motion, things move faster so they diffuse faster. Surface area. If you have to have or cross something for diffusion to happen, the more surface area you have, the faster the diffusion can take place. And then basically what's moving? Small things move faster than large things. Uh, when it comes to the cell membrane, nonpolar things move more than polar. You know, so. so what can move through the membrane? Now, these are the phospholipids right here. That's a protein, a channel protein. A a pump it's something like that a gate so it's just our protein right there so oxygen it can pass pretty quickly because it's nonpolar carbon dioxide is kind of polar really it's not uh, but it moves because it's small and such and of course water which is very polar but it's also very small so it moves through so these guys right here can cruise in and out they can cross that membrane so the driving force behind them is diffusion uh, facilitated diffusion, you have a protein channel and it just allows specific ions to cross. Uh, in the human cell and in living cells, you have sodium channels, you have chloride channels, you have potassium channels and such. Uh, and they, they allow things to just cross. It's like you open a gate and the cows get out, right? Uh, so, or you open a gate and the dog can pass through, but the cows can't. It's just a, a type of facilitated diffusion. There you can see one of them channel proteins. And this here you see these glycolipids right here. That's part of that glycocalyx that you see on the cell. Uh, this is an animal cell. And so there's cholesterol embedded in animal cells. Uh, that cholesterol helps to stiffen the membrane. It helps give it some little bit of rigidity. Although all of your cell membranes are very fluid, they're not, they're not like a piece of cardboard. They, they can move, they can flow, they're very fluid. There's an example of a facilitated uh, diffusion where you can see the large blue ones now are allowed to cross and whoo, hey, look, it happened. So uh, this is an example of a type of facilitated diffusion and such where things cross and you can play that video. Um, so osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water across a semi-permeable, partially permeable, selectively permeable. All types of terms can be used right there. Now on this, water wants to spread out and reach an equilibrium with the other molecules, but not with the water molecule itself, if you think of it like that. So here's these sugar molecules. You see the little blue. And then you have more on this side. So the water wants to spread out to where there's so many water molecules per sugar molecule. So there is a pull, or what you would hear it's called a potential, a water potential. And this will the water will go and it will reach uh, equilibrium. And there, see now you actually have more water on one side. But because of the ratio of water to sugar or water to solute, it has reached equilibrium. Uh, water continues to move back and forth. There's just no net movement. No net movement. You know. This creates these uh, uh, conditions of tonicity. 
and you'll hear about hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic. Uh, and you have to take the prefix, the iso, the hyper, and the hypo, and it's referring to the uh, environment that the cell is placed in. So there's so much salt and sugar within the cell, and you put it into pure water, there's none in the pure water, so that pure water is considered hypo. Is a low salt or a hypotonic. Uh, that causes the uh, water from the environment to move into the cell. Flip it around. You put that cell into a, a very salty solution, and that would be considered hypertonic. That environment causes water to leave the cell. And then if you put it into an environment that had the same amount of salt sugar on both sides of the membrane, that's equal or ISO. And so the water moves. It moves, uh, but it's there's really no net movement of one side of the membrane or the other. See, that, when, it, when, when you have that, this type of tonicity, you cause water to move into the cell or you can cause water to leave the cell. Uh, it can move into a point where it ruptures and it can uh, be pulled out to a point where it shrinks or shrivels. Now, active transport <clears throat> in nature, and this is a neat thing about really a lot of all cells, not just human cells, but really all cells, sodium is found on the outside and potassium is found on the inside. Uh, this has to be maintained. If you just let natural diffusion take place, these will become equal on both sides. So a cell, a living cell, is putting energy in to maintain this. And so that's known as an active transport. And so you have these special proteins which are selective for uh, a specific ion and they move these ions. So we call them these protein pumps because they're pumping these ions against their gradient. They're moving things from a low concentration to a high, kind of opposite of diffusion. So energy has to be put in, and that energy is in the form of ATP, ATP. So when that happens, we say that those are active pumps or active transport. If no ATP is needed, then we refer to those as a passive, so energy is not needed. Uh, <clears throat> this is an example of how a special protein, uh, transport protein, is needed. And it's a type of a, uh, an example of how and why insulin is needed to help cells get glucose out of the blood or from the digestive system into the blood and all. So that's a type of facilitated diffusion. These little uh, finger-like extensions, that increases the surface area of the cell. There's the glucose in your food. And these special proteins help move just glucose in. And then it moves it across the cell into the blood like that uh, sometimes uh, the uh, <clears throat> the incidence of uh, lactose intolerance you've heard of that where you can't have dairy foods and such so you don't have an enzyme to break down the lactose so the lactose accumulates in your uh, intestines and they stay on the outside because you don't have a protein for that disaccharide these had to be broken down to glucose to a monosaccharide. So now you have all these solutes outside of the cell that creates a hypertonic environment. And then that pulls water out of your intestinal lining cells into the uh, cavity or the lumen of the intestine. Then that then is transported on out and that causes the feces to be from a semi-solid to a uh, watery liquid. Gross. So, uh, I'll leave you with that.